<laughs> Here we are, yay! Yay! Hi, Sheila. Good morning. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Good everybody. morning everyone. Yay. We're Welcome. Here. We're back. We're back. We had a little one week rest. Re well, well, we, we weren't were resting. We were working. A rest from us going off. Yeah, the we rails were. Here. We were actually at a, a <laughs> four day, five hour a day um, a conference with our independent retail group. Virtual conference. So we have a newly found respect for all of the Zoom uh, educators and, and students. I don't know how they did it for over a year. I wow. had a headache every night. So by four o'clock, I'm like, I'm so done with this. I know. It was a crazy. great conference, but it's just, I think it's just staring at the screen and then, you know, everyone's moving and the camera refocus. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was insane, but it was really good. So good. Sheila and I have a lot of, of things to share with you. Not all today, um, <laughs> but we've, we've got, we're going to be working on like a year's worth of fun stuff. Yeah. No. Right, and the tea room. The tea so, room. So we have all that. Um, we have a couple questions. I love today. questions. You know, I love for you. Um, I just, just in case you were running late, I just <laughs> pulled this up. Just in um, case. Just in case. Just in case. You know, because <laughs> it never happens. We're um, we're gonna answer a question about tea and kidney stones. I thought that was interesting. And then um, what was the other one? Oh, a tea practice, like your personal tea practice. I don't know if any of you have a personal tea practice, but um, we'll talk about that. Mike, hey, good morning. Good morning, Sneha. Mike. Mike and Sneha, some of our, our tea little friends, they have oh, a new puppy. Right oh, they have a new- We need pictures, Suki. pictures. Suki. The uh, puppy's name is Suki. Yeah, I love that. What it's kind of so puppy? Good. Tell us what kind, Mike. All right, so let's um, let's start with this so we can both have our- You have a mindful moment. Just a, a very short one. Friend, come and share a pot of tea. My heart is warm and my friendship is free. It should be. <laughs> but the afternoon tea is going to cost you thirty nine ninety nine. I like this. Yeah, I know. That's a lovely one. It is a good one. Because I one. think that's kind of how you really started mm -hmm. the cafe space, the right. bar. You just want to share. Just have people come and be together. Right? Be together. And... Uh, you know, January is almost over. We're resetting and recovering. So that's cool. Um, oh, she just took a picture. She thinks she's part pit and part terrier, says Oh, Mike. so it's a little guy. Or gal. Or gal. Gal, right? Um, hang on one sec. I also, okay, that's for something else. I know I put, I pre-did all these banner thingies. What's in our cuppa? What are you drinking? Because <laughs> I ran in here like seven seconds ago. No, I'm no. drinking oh chai. Oh chai. Me too. So it's sip. so good. It's so good. All right, here we go. You tell us what you're drinking. We got some ginger. Yeah, I got the zest of the pepper at the end. Mm. This is just like chai winter is just the best. I know. It's the best. So if you are it's new like to our homemade chai, we, we finish it. We end our homemade chai at the beginning of spring. So it starts like the last the, Thursday of winter. Yeah. Which is like around March 16, mm -hmm. I don't know, 16 or 23. One of those. It's going to be 16. Yeah. Because we're opening that tea room. Oh, we're true, not true. making chai. No. <laughs> Although we have a kitchen to make the chai. Yes, we do. Yay. So maybe we'll do like a pink chai at some point. Oh, know? yeah. Because <laughs> if you don't know what pink chai is, that one's special, special. That is a good chai. The it's chai like chai. a, right. <laughs> it's beautiful and it turns pink, but it really does take, um, a long time to make right. and it's made with a green tea that one's a labor of love stay tuned so we'll do that um yeah so i'm drinking chai as well because it's winter and there's snow on the ground yeah we finally snow. like it's been really pretty for the last couple of days we could use a little peek of the sun but it's been really pretty good morning to me uh you know what i have my apron on but i have this cute t-shirt normally i don't uh you can't see it because he's like, there it is. T Rex. Oh, it's your T Rex it's shirt. It's my T Rex shirt. So Tanya and Dimitra um, had given it to me, gifted oh, it, which was really nice. Very sweet. And I thought, oh, but I have my apron on. <laughs> can't see it right now. I'm wearing um, tufts today. Yes, let me grab this up. Yeah, tell us what's, uh, oops. Tufts is awesome. 
What a great school. It's a great school. And so our Lula, the store namesake, has been accepted to Tufts. She'll be attending in the fall. So, so good. I am representing today. So congratulations, Lula. And Yay. I look forward to coming out and seeing your beautiful campus. I saw some pictures and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. That's and so nice. such a good school. We're so proud of her. She's going to do great things in this world. So we're go Jumbo. Go Jumbo. I had no idea. I yeah. learned that today. But I'm so glad she sent me a shirt. So I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll represent. That's cool. I'm sure we'll and see I, more Tufts. And I can't believe she's going to college because when we named the store, oh my she gosh. was just a baby. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my it's God. This years. sweet baby warms years. my heart. Like a cup of tea. Aww. Well, but we named it. We named Tea Lula when she was born, but we didn't open until four years later. But uh, the name came from that. From her. Like this. I go. What is with she this baby that warms my heart? Like she's a cup an, of tea. She's the inspo. The funny thing was calling her parents and I'm like, "Hi, can we name our company after your baby?" And, and they're like, really okay. "Okay, no <laughs> prob, no prob." Lisa, thanks for joining us. So congrats, the soy Lula. Matcha latte. Oh, yum. Caramel pour. A caramel pour, Michael. I want to talk about pours in a minute. Uh, to Park Ridge Blend, one of my favorites. Park Ridge Blend, um, one of I'm my favorites. hoping we will be. Is it? I don't know if we got that back in stock. They have to actually um, blended um, for, special for us. Cool. In Germany. And then it was, uh, wasn't it about to get like, uh, it was not going to come no, and then it came. No, it's was, done. And then oh. we now have to we have to have it blended for us. Okay, yeah, I see. Same um, with Uva Granada. Oh, all right. We're gonna have to have like a whole show based on our some of our blends and the ones that have gone. You know, kind of like in memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're so welcome to meet you. So if I wear it, sometimes it's just I'm wearing it, but it's not on a Thursday, so I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, let's get into this this question. All right. Could drinking tea cause kidney stones? And I thought this was personal because you've had kidney issues. issues, which are all fine. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Thank God for interventional radiologists. <laughs> interventional radio. You're yes. lifesavers. I would like, seriously, if I talked to you, I think you're like a medical professional because yeah. of all the things that you know. I just play one on TV. <laughs> there you go. Play one on a TV store. Uh, so kidney stones, I've heard this question a yes. few times, more than a few times, but I don't know if there's anything specific. It's black tea. It's black tea. And it's the, um, I can't remember the name of the type of stone. Oxalates? Uh, yeah. So or, no, 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 no. Wait. Is it? It's a, it's an oxalate of some kind. There's like two different kinds. But anyway, um, the reason why I know this is because my, um, one of my team mentors, Bruce Richardson, um, wrote a lovely article about um kidney stones and tea many years ago and um the way to avoid first of all i think you need to drink a lot of black tea specific to black tea okay and then in order to avoid it you have to put something to bind with the tea to keep those crystals from forming and that would be um, a dairy so if you put milk a little splash of milk and black tea you can avoid it so crystals mean minerals right and they kind right? of build up and know. then you have to pass them and like oh ow <laughs> yeah, it can be excruciating. Guys. Yeah. If you're watching, there's like a little um, yeah. picture here, you know, you'll get that weird backache. Mm -hmm. I've had a kidney stone, like very small, and it was still very annoying. Yeah, it's terrible. And I, I mean, I don't know when I passed it, but I did because then the pain just went away. Mm -hmm. Unless it, does it ever dissolve? They, well, I don't, I don't think they necessarily dissolve. I think it just depends on the size when you pass them. Mm. Like you might, if they're tiny, you might not even then you know don't you know. pass them. When they're bigger, you know you've passed one. Oh, here it is, oxalate. So yeah. I have a printout, but there are so many health articles on this. Um, you know, so there's going to be discussions about green tea or black tea or oolongs, but you know about the black tea. It's the black tea, tea now. I, I've never heard it associated with green tea, although I saw in your article it shows that it could be green tea could prevent them i don't know the science behind that mm -hmm. so we're gonna, I'm, I'm not sure we're, we're this one was printed from um it's the tea box which okay it's a tea blog but we're going to definitely look a little yeah. bit more closely so i think if you're susceptible to kidney stones you should avoid um it has to do with i'm sure with the oxidation of the tea because green 
black oolong all come from Camilla sinensis. So it probably has to do with the oxidation and then um, how your a body your body like it builds Lost. these crystals from the, the the black tea. So I would say if you're prone to um, to kidney stones, to kidney stones, you may want to avoid black tea. Have some oolong. Um, the other thing is just don't drink like copious amounts. Right. Like, you're, don't drink like you know four <laughs> gallons of ice. You know black iced tea in the summer. Change it up a little. <laughs> you know because yeah. water is good for you. You know that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you actually, I was just looking at Mike's, um, yeah, so you do, you do have to drink a lot of black tea, but some, some people just based on their genetics mm -hmm. or their body, they tend to make those stones like more and faster than like the average person. Yeah. So, but if you, but you would know that by now, because at some point in your life, if you're, if you make stones easily, you probably already know that. So if you're that person avoid drinking a lot of black tea. A lot of black tea. Do you know if you, let's say your first time kidney stone, right? Does that make you more susceptible? I'm wondering if there's I'm any like kidney That's doctors. That's a really good question. Oh my gosh, I should ask my cousin's daughter. She's a nephrologist Religious. person. Yeah. So that would be interesting to know. And then, you know, there's like people who have renal health issues or there's like a renal health diet. I'm but, curious to know what tea is on there. But your doctor would already have talked to you about it. Right. I but, you know, it's interesting after my kidney issue, which really wasn't a stone, it mm -hmm. was something bigger. Something else. Um, there are no restrictions. Okay. So just drink a lot of water and go to the bathroom. Nature's Don't hold it. Filter. <laughs> Nature's filter. Nature's right? filter. Yeah. I didn't know that, that when you, you should not wait to void. That's bad for your kidney. Okay. Don't do that. FYI. Oh, I thought it was just bad for like the bread. It's just bad for your system, probably. Yeah, just go potty when you feel it. Listen, okay, as my niece <laughs> said, <laughs> my four, when, when she was four, I think she's like, listen to your body. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, right now my body's saying, beat me. Oh, we want to go get a scone or something? No. Okay, fine. My beloved husband made me a sandwich. Oh, that's so nice. Yes. All right. So let's um, change gears and then we're going to answer the next question, which I like this little picture. Um Aww. It's our personal tea party. That's a, if you're watching, there's a picture of Sheila doing a little tasting and all sorts of little cups of teas there. So the question I should bring it up. Um, I thought this was very interesting as we are going into the 15th year of tea Lula. Gosh. 15. Did you start with a personal tea practice? I really didn't. I just drank it. Okay. Drink the tea. I was just drinking the tea and I love the tea and I love different types of tea. And I just love everything about tea and learning about tea and flavors. And so for me, it wasn't so much about a practice or a ceremony. It was just, it was just always, you know, it's just, there's tea. And you would have that, like right. the afternoon tea. You're the afternoon tea person. Really. Right. Right. I just drink the tea. And then you go to different tea I love going rooms? to tea rooms. Okay. I thought that was fun. And the thing that I loved about going to different tea rooms is when I, so my previous life, I traveled for work. And so whenever I would go to a city for work, and it was always big cities because it was big uh, conferences that we did, um, I would always try to find a tea room. And even Fred would go with me. So we've been to tea rooms in, you know, Utah and, and Nebraska, even you know, like Nebraska. And it was just really fun because every tea room had um, its just its own personality. And that's why like years ago when someone was, you know, wanted to do like a franchise tea room, tea house thing, it's kind of, I remember like so many of us just rejected that notion wow. because the tea room experience is supposed to be very individualized. You know, it's like, okay. what is the owner's vision or what is the company's vision for this tea room? Like some people love like the super floral, very <laughs> feminine, um, like Victorian, Victorian or okay. just chintz, you know, the flowers everywhere. Some, some love that style. Some are very traditional British tea rooms. Mm -hmm. um, mine is more of a simple elegance, you know, so. You, it's not su it's not super feminine because my hats. husband enjoyed tea. Yeah, we're not going to do the hats here. No, and just because I know that when I've traveled with Fred and we've gone to tea, it, it was the ones that are super feminine. Um, they just they it's almost like oh, there's a guy here today. 
Really? Yeah. It was. It wasn't like he felt comfortable in that environment. It was like, oh, this is a this is like a girls' place. It, it was like a girls' club. It was just too much of an anomal anomal. No, anomal. Anomal. There we go. Yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't think as welcoming as one that is made for specifically for just people who enjoy tea and not super super girly. So, but I but I enjoy those too because I always like to see what other tea room people do. True. Well, I'm just looking at the picture of our tea bar. I mean, there were days when I'd come and it was just all men mm -hmm. sitting. I was like the men of Tula, right? Which is fantastic. I know, and that's why it's always been just people who drink tea, not necessarily like a, a ladies a ladies who lunch kind of a place. True. Yeah. So the yeah. question really it was like, how has your tea practice matured? or changed over the years? Well, I definitely drink way more expensive teas than <laughs> I did in my constant comment days. Oh, wow, yeah. You know, I think I think from doing all the tastings and, and, and all the cuppings over the year, I just have such a deep appreciation mm. for the people who, who make the tea from the pluckers to the mm. people in the factories manufacturing for all those hands that go into making this very simple um, luxury that I enjoy every day. That to me has been the biggest, like even when Fred and I were in India and Sri Lanka and meeting um, the people at the factories making the tea, oh, that's gotta be so fun. That's kept an impression on me because of how many people it takes to bring you this simple lovely beverage a beautiful beverage so i always think of them Aww. i always think of the people like in the fields and how to get these extraordinary flavors and characters you have to pluck just the right leaf at the right time oh all the manufacturing has to be done in a specific way done at the right time like drying the leaves like the right temperature at the right time all of that to me is is remarkable it is. And once you get into like the whole background of tea and how it's like actually gets into your cup, that's <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Well, that's like just even the tip of the iceberg with our intro to tea class, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like people who come here who are just starting out in their loose leaf tea journey, mm -hmm. they have no idea. Like I had no idea. But um, it, it just it just opens up this whole like wonderful world of flavors and nuance and it's just more than you know than just putting the tea bag in the yeah it's just it's it's fair yeah. it's different it's just um you it can it can transport you like i know like mm -hmm. right now building out the tea room is a little bit stressful just a little just a little bit because we little. wanted to be open by thanksgiving okay. and now it's like oh it's it'll be fine it'll be fine so i find <laughs> that when i get like completely and totally overwhelmed all i need to do is brew up a taiwanese oriental beauty and i am like See, or it trans it you. transports you because of the aroma and the flavor, and then you reflect on the people in the fields picking this leaf and drying it so perfectly, and the little hopper bugs having a little snack on it, <laughs> snacking on the tea leaf. Well, I love that as you're saying it. I'm like, there's an order to tea, the order of tea growing, the order of tea processing, right. the order of tea steeping. Mm -hmm. there's, it's just it's beautiful. Yeah. Here we have a couple of um, comments. Oh, Anne, so nice. She's making her tea journey so much better. Oh, thanks, Anne. Oh, that warms my heart. Oh, my God. I've never been to some. No, I haven't. Sure, this is so hot. memorable. It's hot. It's hot. It's really humid. Humid, hot. So... Cal if it's anything like Calcutta, put oh, it oh, girl. <laughs> It's just hot. I hope I can visit when the farm. You know, I would imagine it's really cool to see a tea farm in full bloom. It's amazing. When it's really There's a lot of activity, but it's just so, it's kind of, it's interesting. It's a lot of activity, but it seems to be very like Zen-like. People are just quietly in the field plucking tea see, and some of the pluckers sing that's my kind like of songs. Place. And then you go in the factory and it's just the hum and the noise of the, the rollers, especially in Assam when they primarily produce black tea. Oh yeah. You're gonna hear like rolling machines the and, the, and the sorters and just a hum to it. Yeah, I bet. And the scent. Oh. The scent of the tea. The scent in the withering room is amazing. Yeah. The, Good it's, bad. It's, it's it's like a big woof of spring fresh. Ooh. It's just delightful. However, mm. when the tea is being oxidized, it gets to this point and it's called the duels and it's when it's like 
the juices are coming out okay. of the leaf and it gets really sticky and um, it's oxidized. It smells like 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 bad apples. <laughs> but that's <laughs> what I'm looking duels. for that. D O U L D S. Duels. The duels. I'm, but learning, yeah, I'm learning all these new words. Yeah, it's so sticky, good. but it smells like they're trying to get it to. I think that when this chemical reaction has occurred, it's when it starts to smell like. Um, sour apples and that's when they so know cool. it's move on to the next step but I was not a fan of that aroma it's like oh that's like a bad apple but then you know because of that scent right you know where it is in the process mm -hmm. so cool. it's real sticky you could put it together like a it, baseball and, and then you have to get like feel mm -hmm. the, the texture it's those juices coming out and you need those um, spread all over the leaves <laughs> Was that just oh just a few years ago she switched from tea bags? Oh your oh your wife's from Calcutta. Oh it's hot there. It's just hot. I just remember just being hot. It was hot. <laughs> I mean, I I know Philippines hot. It's probably similar. We went to the tea auction in Calcutta. That was fascinating. Ooh. That's where we met a gentleman who was absolutely delightful. Um he would cup eight hundred teas a oh, what? day. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Hundred. All right. I have no idea why my computer. Are we back? This is my annoyed face. Like, I'm uh -huh. so sorry. No, no, it's like not you. All right. Something in the interwebs. In the inter. We're back. We're back. Cool. Very nice. Uh, question: Have you introduced the construction workers to some tea? Yes, we have. Um, so Tom Scalina from Scalina Electric is a real big fan of Long Jin or Dragon Well. Oh, nice. Even took some home to his wife and he almost like needed a brown bag to breathe into when he saw the price. <laughs> that is too funny. Discerning um, taste. Yeah. So what else did I so and a lot Paul. of a lot of Arnold Palmers. Right. Um yeah, they like the Arnold Palmers. I think yeah, usually it's when... hard on a break mm -hmm. because by the That's time they get to it it's cold yeah, yeah so we've been feeding them with iced tea like i should probably just make it from like a kungia ctc assam and like really caffeinated like keep working there you go <laughs> oh my gosh too funny <laughs> too funny now paul's been our carpenter paul has just been working as he's a out. rock star yeah well and john mackin and john he's, mackin. He's mackin's blend <laughs> yeah he has his own blend yeah he so own. he drinks coffee yeah I'm like, I can't believe it. You built me a tea room and then okay. you drink coffee. I don't fault him for that. No. But uh, if you all have a personal tea practice, share with us. Oops. You know who has a tea practice? It's Tony Gebley. Oh, well, yeah. He's good. like a... Yeah. Well, he, a he works in IT. I think he moved to Florida now. But Tony, if you're yes. watching, yes. we still think of you often. We have your book. Yes. Um, he wrote a great book. Um, if you're getting into tea... It's like a it's a great primer for it. But um Tony has um had he and his wife are so um into tea that they actually did a tea ceremony as part of their wedding oh, ceremony. That's beautiful. That's way beyond my experience. But yeah, he's he's pretty amazing. There you go. Was it always a student, never a master, mm -hmm. something like that? So always a student, never a master. So, I mean, in essence, like in our own personal tea practices, we're pretty young. I mean, I know I'm, I'm younger than you with the tea practice for sure. Look at her, I'm younger I'm than younger. you. No, no, no. Like with the tea <laughs> practice, like I, and I am so like inspired when you like bring out all these different teas that you've tasted. I'm like, mm -hmm. I have no clue. So fun. In your, um, your class, that's going on too, right? Yeah, the class is going to, oh, so I'm on pause until after, um, with my tea sommelier class, I, I, I'm i on a hiatus, or okay. it sabbatical. Yeah, yeah, it's a sabbatical. sabbatical until after the tea room's open, because to be honest, right now I'm looking for an ADA toilet. <laughs> oh! <laughs> We'll help you with that. No, I have one. Oh, it's just okay. they're out of stock. And so oh, we gotta find another one. It's darn like, it. oh my gosh. Oh, it's always yeah. something. So that's what I spent yesterday oh, doing was looking for a a toilet. A toilet. Okay. Well, let's just have some more tea. Um, we'll talk more about our personal tea practices as the What's year goes on. What's your personal tea practice? Mine, you know what? It kind of started more because I came here for the loose leaf, and then I would just now I just try all sorts of different teas that are unflavored from different parts of the world mm -hmm. and i'm more of the person that you know i'm doing the 
little cuppings, a little, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll sip and I'll write notes and I kind of will let my mind be transported to the different origin countries. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice. But I'm very out of practice when it comes to the tastings, mm -hmm. just because I wouldn't try to do it at home. I know. So and that's, I practice. think we just need to get back into doing a lot of cuppings. I yeah. think that that'll be, I think once everything here kind of gets rolling and it comes down and I'd like to make that a daily ritual here oh, where we come nice. in and we, we cup a tea and talk about it. And so cup of tea or me or cupping is what the, it's the it term for tasting, yeah. for now, you know, analyzing a tea. Now here's interesting. I don't mm -hmm. ever cup teas the way they would do mm -hmm. say at the Calcutta auction. Yeah. I drink a, a sample of tea in a way that I just drink it the way you would drink it. You know, what, what is, because when you're drinking your tea at home, I don't know if you're really spending a lot of time slurping and doing all that. It's a yeah. fun thing to do to really get the nuance. Generally, you're just sitting and enjoying a cup of tea with right. someone. So right. that's what, that's kind of where I when try to try at, them at. That's, although I can tell if something's like off. Oh yeah, for sure. And then I'll have to like steep it again. and like, wait, did I taste what? Am I tasting what I thought I tasted? And I have to figure it out. But you know what's also really great, though, is when we do our tastings, a lot of when we had our classes, a lot of times people would say, you know, I don't really have a refined palate. Trust me. Mm -hmm. You drink um, some loose leaf teas for a while, and then you go, well, like the high school kids would go on vacation, and they would come back and like, yeah, I went to a restaurant on vacation, and I had a tea bag tea, and it was just not the same. I'm like, now you know. Now you know. So they, you, you can develop that palate for really nuanced teas. Yeah. It's like even just having it side by side, mm -hmm. like just one time is like, oh. Oh, when we do like when we enter classes with like a tea bag tea, like the cheapest tea bag tea we could find against like a really beautiful like, salon and people are like, oh, you're just like, no, yeah, what? Yeah, just a normal <laughs> tea bag tea. It doesn't even have to be cheap, but just, you know, you just don't know when it was processed. You don't know how long it's been sitting in the box. Right. You don't. You don't know. But you know what this picture reminds me of? Like mm -hmm. when we do some of our samples, when you see the leaves, this is what I really, I guess you would call this a practice. Whenever, mm -hmm. you know, we are preparing teas for customers, we, like even yesterday, I showed a lady how how much the tea blooms and like when you, and that's why we don't sell tea mm -hmm. balls. And then mm -hmm. when you, and then I can't remember, someone came in recently and they ordered a Biluchan. And that is so beautiful. And it was so great to show the staff after he had oh, left how the, it's a perfect it's bud so set. Nice. You know, like, think about it. Someone hand harvested that perfect two leaves in the bud right at the at the right time. And if you think of all the hands that went into getting that tea to you and how it's still in that perfect bud set, that mm -hmm. is some care going into to that practice. Oh, for sure. It's mm -hmm. like growing the plant, plucking it, and it's like perfect. I mean, picture perfect. It is. It's so cool. And it can still be, I mean, it, even though it looks perfect, it could still taste messed up if it's yeah, something up. But it's just very beautiful to like, uh, take a moment to appreciate the hands that harvested that tea for you. Very much. I think that's part of my tea practice is that I will sit, like I have a meditation journal. Like I really dig that and I need that time to just, I don't know, get my Zen on in mm -hmm. a way. So that's part of mine is more like a tea um, meditation or like being mindful about what I'm consuming and really like taking in the sensory aspect of it. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to explore that this year. So I hope maybe some of you may want to explore that too. That's great. Anne has a great question. Very good. Let's see. We have bought silver needles last week. Oh, don't yeah. be afraid. I'm telling you, don't, silver that's needles. A question. That's a wonderful question. And let me tell you about silver needles. You cannot mess them up. You can even use boiling water on them because it's that, that mm. beautiful, pure bud. So I like to do silver needles. Now, the recommendation for silver needles goes anywhere from water at 175 degrees to up to a boil. Oh, okay. It, it just depends. You would need to leave those silver needles in a cup of hot water for a good 10 minutes before you're going to extract really? bitterness. So... Those are just so light and wonderful and you cannot ruin them. So what I would say, because they can do, you can steep those all day long. Traditionally, you would just put the leaves in a cup, put, keep the water on them and just, you know, drink the tea with the leaves in it because it takes forever for them to get um, bitter. But what I would say is <clears throat> I would do them 
probably like 195 degrees if you want to be a little off the boil. Maybe steep for two minutes. Do a yeah. small amount. Like oh, do yeah, like, like a small. six or eight ounce, like a small amount, and then re-steep that. And do it, add maybe 30 seconds to it. And then re-steep that and add maybe another 30 seconds or a minute. And just keep going. And you can just do that all day. Now, silver needles are very caffeinated. Yeah, so yeah. it's all concentrated <laughs> in that bud. So if you just have one steeping, you're going to be fine. If you steep it all day, you're going to get like a slow infusion of caffeine into your system you all day long. Awake. So you'll just be like alert. You'll be alert. So this is like a mega big cup. I would, you know, so we're talking probably half that. Mm -hmm. And she was saying six to eight ounces. Or that's like a regular, like if you're using your nice china, mm -hmm. that would be like, like your, your nice china cup. Yeah, that's about yeah. six to eight. Do right? not worry about ruining your silver needles. Do not. No. But you probably uh, will know. So we weigh our tea here. To make yeah. a cup, you need like a heaping it's tablespoon. Fluffy. It's fluffy because then you to taste, mm -hmm. right? To taste. Really high blood pressure. Oh yeah, perfect for a guy one says Mike. Perfect yes. for a guy one, Mike. You are Great. absolutely I right. Have yeah, I want to show you. But <laughs> but a heaping tablespoon of of that, and then just keep steeping, 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 and then light. What I would also suggest is that you don't <laughs> have food with those. Kind of leave those alone. Like I would not drink silver needles after having this chai because my palate's been adulterated by all the spice. It's blown out, right? Yeah. So just just enjoy them for their beauty, the the gentle floral notes of them, the smoothness on your palate, the slight earthiness. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy that. But if you eat it, like you can't have that with a taco. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> and I would say. Don't brush your teeth right before you do any tea tasting. Right. Like, or wear let perfume. it settle. Oh, yeah, that too. Perfume mm -hmm. or, or uh, cologne. Um, or like my, like I have stinky hairspray on today. Oh. And it's like, no. Mm -mm. But then it's good because the chai stands up. <laughs> you know, so we're not doing like a, a very subtle tasting tea, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, so cool. No, those are great questions. That's guys. a great question. Thank so, you. And let us know how it goes. So go brew some up and just... Um, let us know how it goes. You cannot ruin them. Even if you oversteep them, trust me, they are just forgiving. So, yeah, I didn't know that. So now we know. Oh, white tea also is pretty forgiving, right? I mean, or the um, Bai Mudan. Yeah. Anything say, that's a whole tea. leaf, like is beautiful whole leaf, is very hard to mess up. Very forgiving. All right. Before we go, um, we are down to our last two journals, which is so great. Can you believe that? I think this was like a really nice gifty last month. So um, if you haven't seen these five minute journals as part of our wellness bundle, which is, Sheila made them. I did. I made she them. Made them. Mugs. They're so fun. Look at that. I need to get my craft on. She does. We do. A lot of us here, we have other lives. We have, we have our crafty <laughs> lives um, and it keeps us sane. Uh, so come in. We only have a few left, I think. So cute little fuzzy socks because fuzzy socks. Oops, there. Yep, all I need is hot tea and, and tea. Warm sauce. There you go. And then you can get a little uh, infuser basket, even if you don't have all the accoutrements, as you say. And then these just came in a couple days ago. I mean, a new batch. So we have like 11 different candles. And they're beautiful because they have um, crystals in them. They are beautiful. So you can get your, your Zen on right there. And I, I'm not sure if the, I'm, I think the crystals coordinate to like the fragrance and the the mood yeah. we're trying to this candle company they're really they're cool mm -hmm. very fun so they've done all the coordination there's different flavors different scents all that good stuff so i think it's like the whole bundle because it's like the candle the mug the socks the tea the journals i mean it's like a really neat product that lily put together very so very clever almost here. a lot of creativity a lot oh <laughs> And just brush your teeth. Oh, Lisa. yeah. They'll taste funny. Nice. All right. What else we got going on? Um, once again, the tea room is open on weekends. Cafe is open on weekends. But tomorrow we do mm -hmm. have um, a, a carpenter coming in who only can give us, I think, two days. So he's coming in tomorrow and he may be in on Saturday. So if you come in on Saturday, you may hear some sawing, but we have to get it done. Yeah. Sorry. Get her like, done. We don't want to close it, but we definitely want to warn you. 
All he's right. coming very early though, so maybe he'll be done. Like the wallpaper guy mm. came today and he was out in two hours. Okay, so maybe I'll make a I'll just make a little note and put it out there. I think that's it. We should take a else? picture of the wallpaper I because we, we only put it in our kitchen, so it's for our chef. But I'm telling you, I think it's really for you. The right? most for me. But, <laughs> it's really for you. But yeah, it's for the chef. It's for us. But it's like when you go in there, it, it's going to be the most beautiful kitchen and the most beautiful, delicious scones and sandwiches are going to come out of there. It's inspiration. Can't wait. Oh, one more. Happy three year anniversary to our Vanessa on Sunday. Yes, <laughs> Vanessa. Three. <laughs> She's right there. She's a, you're on camera. <laughs> she's three. She's oh my three. God, you go so fast. I appreciate you. Tamitra, when will afternoon tea start? Pardon me? When will afternoon tea start? Oh gosh, we're, we don't, we're, so we're hoping mid-March, but that depends on a whole lot of things falling into place we're in so the next close, six guys. weeks. We're so close. That's our, you'll be the first to know. We'll announce it here once we're, once those painters are done. Well, we need tables and chairs and plates. And I'm just going to put mats out on the floor. <laughs> we're just going to sit low. Get some beanbag chairs. <laughs> That's it. That's what we're going to do. It's just, it'll be fine. Oh, the muscle picture. Yeah, it was good. That was a whole other story too. The muscle picture? The, we're trying to jam the, the table, the oh, work, the work table into the corner. Cannot move walls, guys. Can't. I couldn't move the wall. My we'll arm is like, I'll just notch it out. I'm we'll like, try. Oh my God, you built It's not as wall. flexible as I thought it might be. Yeah, I couldn't get that table in there. Just notch it. Yeah, I'm waiting on casters for the refrigerators because they don't <laughs> fit where they're supposed so to go. Things. And so they're too high. And Some things are too high. Some things are too, too low. low. Some things aren't in. And I need to too find. High. And I'm looking for toilet. Okay, we're looking for toilets. All right, everyone. So say your prayers. <laughs> send some good vibes. Yeah. It'll be fine. Just drink some good tea. Drink some good tea. All good. And we yeah. can't wait. We'll see you next week. Good chat. Bye. Good Thanks chat. for joining us. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>